IBM released a brand spanking new processor. And, you know, before you say, oh my gosh, you know, we, we really don't care about this. Um, I, I want to talk about something. So, so first off, uh, I would say 30 years ago started the commoditization of, of the data center uh, and consolidation. Uh, 30 years ago, you had primarily, you know, IBM, uh, you had HP processors, uh, you had DEC faxes, and believe it or not, Intel was just starting uh, in the data center. And then pretty much the entire data center went, went x86, but um, where we are right now holistically with chips is that uh, you're seeing more of them create fit-for-purpose solutions, right? You see Apple, who's the full stack. You have chips, operating systems, and applications uh, out there. Mm -hmm. uh, you have AWS that's creating its full stack. Well, IBM's uh, mainframe unit, uh, and for that matter, Power10, they create their own full stacks as well, except they were doing it 25 years before AWS and uh, Power10. Uh, sorry, AWS and Apple. And technically, uh, before Power, it was the uh, RS6000 and the AS400. But anyways, I, I digress. IBM came out with a new processor for the IBM Z, the next generation uh, out there. And really the key points here are its capabilities for integrated machine learning. And you might say, ah, uh, you know, we've seen that. We saw this with Intel for the last, uh, the last generation. Uh, keep in mind that most financial transactions, whether it's a banking transaction or a retail transaction are done on an IBM Z. And the reason is because it is the most secure platform on the planet. And yes, I am, I am, I am saying that and I'll stick to that and you can challenge me on that if you'd like. Uh, but the other thing is it is optimized. It's more of a throughput engine. Okay. in the way that it's, it's architected, uh, it already, uh, you know, um, ASICs and offload engines, you know, have been cool the last five years, but IBM Z processors already had compression and decompression uh, cryptography. But what Telum offers, the biggest thing it offers is on-chip machine learning, which uh, I think is, is, is pretty cool in the way they, they architected it. So what it, it enables, uh, let's say, a financial institution to do is uh, traditionally, if they wanted to do uh, fraud analysis, you had to do the transaction on the Z and then ETL that data out to let's say an X86 with an NVIDIA, you know, A100 to do uh, uh, training and then maybe, uh, you know, a T4 or, or something like that, a P4 to do the inference. Now you can actually do the inference on the chip without ETLing it out uh, outside. And that saves time. And, and I would say it even is, is, I can't say it's more secure, but it's secure in the fact that you're not moving uh, data uh, over. So uh, that is uh, the, the the big news. Um, the other thing I liked is, is it showed the, the speed of this. So if you have 32 uh, new telems, uh, which is, you know, in a four drawer configuration, 3.5 million inferences at 1.2 milliseconds. And that is nuts. That's crazy, crazy fast. Uh, the other thing I'll add is that, listen, I know IBM has a reputation for being proprietary, but uh, you know the Zs uh, run a full Linux stack all the way up to uh, container management and even systems management. It is all uh, based on open source. Uh, on this AI perspective, it's fully Onyx uh, compliant, which means you know if you want to run Keras, PyTorch, SAS, MATLAB, Chainer, MXNet, TensorFlow, it can be accelerated by this. Uh, by this, uh, by, by this new uh, processor. Um, usually I start with this, but I'm gonna say last but not least, uh, it's an eight core, 16 threads per chip at a mind boggling uh, five gigahertz. It's a kind of a deeper pipeline uh, configuration. Uh, maximum 32 cores, 64 threads. You might be saying, oh my gosh, that's so small. Listen, this is the Z is a transaction uh, engine, you don't need 128 cores. Uh, and also keep in mind that, that mo you know, a lot of the acceleration is either 
uh, on uh, cards uh, or already on the chip itself when it comes like crypto and and compression and uh, and decompression. So I'll leave it at that. Kind of geeky, but uh, we love chips. And listen, chips and SaaS is where it is all at. Uh, theoretically, everything else can be disintermediated in the center. Are we done? Are yeah, we done? We are, are done. We done? <laughs> all right. We call it the six five because we talk about six topics. Pat talks about them for five minutes, and I get what's left. Just kidding. Look at you getting all sensitive over there. Uh, no, really good analysis there. You know, there's a couple things going on. I think first of all, the migration to public cloud has been greatly overstated. Um, you know, we're still seeing a ton of, of, of workloads on prem. And the other thing here that I think the market needs to really understand is that IBM has a very innovative part of its business that focuses on chip development, works side by side with companies like Intel. You might've heard that when uh, Pat Gelsinger made some announcements earlier this year about what they're doing and their long-term strategy. You might've heard about it with the two nanometer announcements that came from IBM not so long ago. And by the way, you know, this is, just a show of understanding the market's continued demand for custom silicone in Michigan critical workloads uh, for specialized needs, which by the way is why Z has been so important for so long in this financial space and the transaction space. The need for this kind of processing continues. AI is only gonna continue to grow, it's exponential. Um, these particular tasks to help uh, improve transactions using inference is gonna be meaningful. You also have to deal with cryptography, compression, sorting. And you know there's a great opportunity to tie this all in with confidential computing and trusted execution environment and enclaves. And I imagine uh, IBM is going to continue to build this all in as part of the stack to show this connection between private, hybrid, public clouds is the route forward. IBM, thanks for telling us what you've done with Telem.